for her. Um, uh, I, I was fortunate enough to be able to visit her in her home, and as you might suspect, her home looks just like this gallery. <laughs> and the problem with artists is, is that for artists, they, oh, you know, that's the thing over there. We don't. That's just another old thing. I get back and whatever. And I said, but I want it in the show. You want that? Yes, I do. So um, much of what you see is the negotiation that we have between each other. But. Um, this is important for us because out of the 10 years, 2004 to 2016, the 12 years that we've been in existence, obviously, I'm, I'm liberal arts graduate, um, <laughs> the 12 years that, that we've been in existence, we've had only four, only five solo exhibitions. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah, you're honored. <laughs> you're very, very honored uh, in this particular space. Um, but I think it's important um, that it's Stephanie that um, helps us to reach this milestone because as many of you know, there is a larger project that's about to kick off here, uh, the Telling Our Stories of Home project, a project that was um, put together by uh, two of our faculty members and actually I'm going to ask Tanya, who had just texted me to say she wasn't coming but is now here, it's a serious magic trick, uh, to come up and say a little bit about telling our stories of home and what that's going to entail. So She's also a board member, so <laughs> I'm here. You know I mean? But I'm here because Joseph has done such a tremendous job that though I'm tired and I'm weary and I'm worn out, it's like I have to come I have to find the time. So this is because of you. But Telling Our Stories of Home is a project that Kathy Perkins, who, okay, <laughs> Kathy Perkins, the dramatic art, uh, and I are working on. This was really Kathy's idea after she read Heather Williams' amazing book, Help Me to Find My People. And Help Me to Find My People is a history about African Americans trying to find their loved ones after slavery. And Kathy read this book, and she's like, we have to do something with this book. And Heather's like, okay. And I said, okay. And Kathy and Heather actually pooled their resources to hire playwright Nicole Salter to write a play based on Help Me to Find My People, which will have its inaugural reading here. But in addition to that, we have put together six days of events over a two-week period, starting March 31st and ending April 6th. We are bringing artists from around the world, women artists from around the African diaspora, including places like Brazil, Rwanda, South Africa, India, Grenada, Haiti, the US, and the UK. Mm. We're bringing filmmakers, dancers, poets, uh, visual artists. So it's gonna be a tremendous program. We hope you can come, we hope you tell your friends, we hope, we hope you tell your family. Another part of this program that's really exciting for us is that there's going to be a festival day on April 2nd, Saturday, April 2nd. We will have a festival from 12 to 5 with food, games for the kids, storytelling, drumming, dancing. So we hope that you will bring your families to as many events as possible and that you will tell your neighbors, tell your friends. We are on the web at tellingourstories.web.unc.edu and Telling Our Stories is on all on work. You can also find us at your website uh, because most of the activities are going to be right here in the Stone Center, right next door in the Hitchcock Room. We're also going to be using the auditorium. There are a few, there are a few other events that are going to take place elsewhere, but um, that's the basic thing. The other thing I would like to say is this event would not be possible without tremendous support from our campus. We've had support from the chancellor, from our deans, our own home departments, the institute that's up here, obviously the Stone Center, and so many other parts of campus uh, that I can't think of. But we've also had some help from partners in the community. The Haytai Center, the Durham Arts Council, the, um, the towns of Chapel Hill and Carver are also partnering with us to make this event as much of a community event as possible. So again, this would not be possible, I think, without tremendous support. Uh, the idea of looking at Chapel Hill as a home, looking at Carolina as a home, and extending that idea into the African diaspora and looking specifically at how Africans and people of the African diaspora has, have defined home and how they have sort of made homes in very difficult, traumatic times and made that home joyful. So we hope you'll come out and celebrate and try to understand what home means with all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Before I ask uh, Stephanie to say just a few more words, <laughs> I know she's, she's, 
she always, she's one of those people who always says, you know, I, I don't like to speak out of that. And she got in front of the class of 66 people a day and charmed them to death. So. But I want to uh, ask the student workers who are here today, work study, student fellows, to raise your hands, please. These are the students that helped them to make sure that things are ready for you. And sometimes I forget to recognize them. And the staff members who are also here, Sharif, Many of you have been looking at the, the materials that were produced for the exhibition. That was uh, Clarissa's uh, planning and organization, as always, with inspiration for me. Uh, and I also, uh, now that you all um, have seen the Guide by Cell, which we were happy to be able to set up, Clarissa is also responsible for setting up the guy by cell. So we are trying to move. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Stephanie to say a few more comments. I know people want to say a few things to you individually. So I'm just going to ask you one more time. Come right up and say what about what? I really appreciate the Stone Center having me here. It's, it's made me feel uh, very special as an artist. A lot of times we toil away in our studios um, without any acclaim. And it's really wonderful sometimes to see uh, people appreciating your work. You know, someone like Dr. Joseph Jordan, you know, who has uh, an appreciation for the arts to come all the way to Athens and say, we want you, you know, to show your work and to expose your work to the people of North Carolina. Because so many, especially artists of color, are, are unseen, you know, and it, it, there's a few art stars. And then outside of that, um, it's very hard to get noticed in the art market. And so it, it's very appreciative to me that, that you all are here and that the students here have been uh, receptive to my work because I, a true artist does their art for themselves first so I'm going to do this artwork regardless <laughs> because it's just in me to tell my story and this is how I tell my story I'm actually someone who's very I love literature I love to read have any of you read the warmth of other suns I mean <laughs> hopefully some of you have you know read between the world and me. I mean, there's just so much amazing fiction and nonfiction, and that's actually in addition to the visual arts where I get my inspiration to do my art, but especially for my hometown of Detroit, which um, a lot of people have had, maybe have negative ideas about because of uh, some of the portrayals. It's, it's a beautiful city. Anytime people can survive and even thrive, in an environment that is not conducive uh, to raising children, to having a healthy environment, to having a safe environment, but they do it anyway, every day. And the artists there, I wanted to do a series that, um, you know, help to say, we're still here, they're still here, we're, we're, we're gonna make it. Whether we're a city of two million or 700,000, you know, we're here and we're not going anywhere. So, I mean, I think that's what part of the series was about. Forgy and Bess, again, it's just about relationships. If you think about the story, the betrayals, but everyone still moves on. Hearts are broken, people still move on. People die, but people still move on and keep moving. Um, and so that's kind of what that was about um, as far as, you know, real life. So in my magical imagination that is like filtered through my crazy imagination. Um, that's what some of the paintings about. Massacre of the Innocents is about, uh, it's about people being tread upon, but not wanting it to be done in secret. If any of you, if the play Ruined ever comes through here, or someone produces it here on campus, you know, please go see it. When I see an amazing artist, I'm so mad I'm not going to be here February 28th, Rhiannon Giddens, 
one of your hometown uh, or home state girls is going to be here. What she's done as far as bringing together the past and the present and making it make sense. Um, she just, her spirit just seems amazing. I haven't seen her in person, but I saw that she was going to be having a concert on the 28th. I mean, that's the kind of thing we need. You know, Beyonce standing up for, you know, for us to say, you know, th that there was meaning in the Black Panther, meaning in Malcolm X, meaning in these people dying in Hurricane Katrina, um, and not be willing to put it out there rather than just glorify the materialism of that type of, uh, you know, music scene. It's just very powerful. So, it's just all good. <laughs> <laughs>
on the Piazza in San Marco when I was in Venice. And I just try to put the two together and, and have fun with it. And Porgy is, you know, in the cart being, uh, you know, carted by the because he had trouble walking. So I just put myself imaginary characters together for an introduction to the play. Um, and let's see, and this one is when they went to the picnic on Kittawa Island. <laughs> yeah, so this is, um, this is, this is maybe uh, best, but this is sporting life. And I can't remember who he, he was played by Sammy Davis in the movie. But I can't remember who played him in the original play. And so I just took images from the movie as far as the marching band and the characters. And the background is more from Sapelo um, in terms of the, uh, the uh, tabby, the hut made out of the tabby shells. So that's my research from there. And then I added some um, caricatures as far as the, the black uh, doll and the black snake with the, with the bulging eyes or whatever, um, in terms of the contrast between the way African Americans were depicted in the current tableau of news or cartoons or in those newspapers versus the richness of their actual life, even when that life was curtailed. But within their own communities, they had a life that was as rich, as full as any other. It's only when they tried to go outside of those boundaries. So you can imagine like on an island like Kittawa or Sapelo, that's why they had their richness of that culture because they didn't have to have that much interaction. And so they were free to, to live their lives and do what, you know, do what they wanted to do. I don't know where all these people came from. <laughs> So anyway, that's kind of where it's all about. Orca Soul Brother series, the Porgy and Beth series, which I have about four or five more pages to do, and then the only Skin Beat series, which is ongoing. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Captivating the audience, so there's not much else that, that, that we can do, but I, I did want to. Um, I know.